When you install a hot water recirculator on your house, like this one I put in from Watts, you get instant hot water at every sink and tub in your whole house. This is terrific when you wanna wash a greasy pan in hot water, when you wanna boil water and you can start with hot tap water instead of cold, or when you wanna jump into the shower without waiting three or four minutes for the water to heat up. I put one of these units in my own house and I track the cost of having the unit for a full year. There are three things that go into this calculation. Without the recirculator, you have to wait for the hot water to get from your tank to your faucet, and meanwhile, the running water goes down the drain. First, without a recirculator, you have to wait for the water to get from your tank all the way to your faucet. That water is running down the drain, and that adds up to quite a few gallons a month. All of that water gets added to your utility bill, and so there is a direct cost savings in water from having this pump and not waiting for the water to heat up. Second, the pump that recirculates the water is electric and it's drawing current all the time that the pump is running. So there is a direct cost that shows up on your electric bill from keeping this pump pushing the water throughout the month. Third, the recirculator works by keeping your water pipes hot all the time. They normally get cold, they cool off the water, and that's the water that's passing by and going down the drain while you're waiting for the hot water to reach the faucet from this tank. Because the earth is continually trying to cool those pipes off, you have to pour heat into those pipes to keep those pipes hot to deliver hot water, and the heat to keep them hot comes from your hot water heater. The heat in the hot water heater obviously comes from your electricity or your natural gas that warms up the water. And so there is a significant natural gas or electricity cost associated with the heat lost in keeping your pipes hot all through the month. I added up all the costs throughout the month for an entire year to figure out what my annual and monthly cost was for the convenience of having hot water at every faucet in my house all the time. I'll show you my results and I'll show you how to figure it out for your own home and see if it's really worth it. But before we get into the cost savings, I want you to see what benefits it can offer. I'll show you how hot the water in my hot water tank is and how hot the water coming out the farthest tap in the house is compared to that. And I'll show you how quickly the hot water recirculator delivers hot water to that sink compared to how it was before I installed the recirculator. Okay, let's go. This is my Watts hot water recirculator that I installed on my natural gas water heater. Without this pump, when you turn on a hot water faucet, there was water resting in the pipe between the faucet and the hot water heater, which had gotten cold since the last time the faucet was used. Before hot water could reach the faucet, the water from the tank first had to push all of that water out of the way and down the drain. But then, the water that leaves the hot water heater gets cooled off as it travels along the copper pipes through my concrete foundation to all the sinks, tubs, and showers. We don't actually get hot water until the flowing water has warmed up those pipes and the water coming in behind it can arrive at the heated temperature. Because the Watt system has a bypass valve at the farthest sink that allows the hot water pushed by this pump to flow across into the cold water return line, and back into this hot water tank. It keeps the water moving. The flowing water keeps the copper pipes warm all the time, so there's no waiting for hot water at any of the faucets. I made a video on how to install the system and how the pump works with the bypass valve in the sink, but a lot of people in the comments wanted to know about how well it performs in reality and what the water temperature at the faucets is. Since the earth is continually trying to cool off the water flowing through my hot water pipes in my foundation, the water doesn't arrive at the sinks at the same temperature that it was heated to in the tank. I wanted to find out how much loss occurs between the tank and the furthest sink, so I hooked up an old garden hose to the dump valve on my water heater so I could pull water straight out and see what the temperature of the water is inside, then compare that to the temperature at the sinks. Okay, my garage is about 64 degrees ambient. So I'm opening the dump valve to see how hot the water coming out of the tank is, and I can see that the water is about 107 degrees coming from the source. I'm here at the farthest sink in my house away from the water heater. The pump has been running, so the pipes leading to the sink should be warmed up to the full capacity of the recirculator. The temperature I get out of this faucet will show how quickly hot water is available and how much loss there is between the heater and the farthest faucet. You see the sink ambient temperature is about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. When I turn on the hot water, the temperature jumps to 96 degrees almost instantly. 
That's a significant improvement considering the 73 degrees sink is probably not far off of the temperature of the water that would have been resting in the cooled off hot water pipes between the sink and the water heater. However, the recirculator has kept that water moving through the bypass valve under this sink and maintained the 96 degree hot water temperature. This 96 degree result is exactly what we should expect because the Watts website says that the valve closes at 96 degrees. So the water at your sink should always be coming out 96 degrees when you start, regardless of how hot you've got your water heater set. It can't exceed that temperature. Now I'm going to fast forward about a minute and see how hot the water can get after the recirculated water in the pipes between this sink and the heater is gone and we're getting water that comes straight from the heater. The water temperature isn't rising anymore and I'm getting about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That means I'm losing about 7 degrees continually in the trip from the water heater to the sink. In my house, the hot water faucets pull about 1.5 gallons every minute and the bathtubs flow about five gallons per minute out of the hot side. Before I installed the recirculator, it took about four minutes for the water to get hot in the shower or at a sink. The bathtub took about one and a half minutes. Each of the four people in the house waited for hot water about four times a day. With about six gallons flowing down the drain each time, 16 times per day, and 30 times per month, I estimate that we wasted about 1,920 gallons per month. Where we live, the cost of residential water is $2.15 per thousand gallons. That means our water cost savings with the hot water recirculator was about $4.32 per month. I only run the pump from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., turning it off every night. A kilowatt hour of electricity at my home is about 14 cents on average. The pump is drawing 0.38 amps on a 120 volt circuit, which means it uses 45.6 watts. 18 hours a day, 30 days a month, that means it draws 24.6 kilowatt hours every month. So my cost for electricity is only about $3.44 a month. Having tracked my natural gas bills for 12 months, I know that the average cost per month of the increased natural gas to heat the pipes is about $35. That amount definitely outweighs the savings in water and dwarfs the cost of the electricity. But then there's happiness. Depending on whether the natural gas cost is within your budget. I think that the happiness value and the satisfaction you get from having hot water every time you need it is worth it. In summary, this pump right now is about $220 brand new. You can easily put it in yourself. It's the simplest plumbing you could do. So on average, if I run the recirculator pump for a month, I'm gonna save about $4 in water that doesn't go down the drain. I'm going to have to spend about $4 to keep that pump running all the time, or at least during the hours that I choose. And then, unfortunately, it's going to cost me about $35 to keep the pipes in my foundation hot all month long, so that when I turn on the tap, hot water is ready immediately. So the water and the electricity cancel out, but the natural gas is a recurring $35 cost, which comes out to around $420 a year. So that's not free, and you have to decide whether or not your budget's going to support that. But I do feel pretty good about saving 24,000 gallons a year that my family would be dumping down the drain waiting for hot water, and the convenience of having hot water for showers and everything else you want to do with it instantly really is a time saver and brings some happiness. So the big question, with what I know now, would I do this again? Well, this pump's been running about three years, so the clear answer is yes. It has been absolutely maintenance free. In fact, one time I left on vacation, turned the water off to the house and the pump was making a terrible whiny noise when I came home because I forgot to shut it off and it had no water to move. And still it's running like a champ. So I had my initial investment and I'm spending about 35 bucks a month to keep it going and keep water to the house. But the convenience and the time savings to me 
is definitely worth it. So I hope that helps you in your decision about what to do about a recirculator pump. If you want more information about how to do the installation or how the sink valve works, or how much current the pump is drawing when it's on and when it's off, check out one of my other videos here. Thanks a lot for watching.